Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about teamwork. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, you made a video about how your personal process for writing code looks like, but what tips can you give when you're not working alone on a project, but rather you're part of a team? This is an excellent question. A, this is... Um, this is actually a really, really good question, and I think that it's something that goes very underappreciated by a lot of developers. This is one of those things where uh, if you, I'm not saying that all of you are going to face this, because I, ha because I had had a few people reach out and say things like, I couldn't get a specific job, or I had issues with a specific company because they didn't like the fact that I hadn't worked in a group. and if you can work some of the stuff that I'm going to give you into a conversation, w if that conversation actually takes place within the company, I think this will be the sort of gold nuggets that might be the thing that that your employer is looking for. Apart from the obvious things such as, of course, communication and values and all of this other fluffy stuff that should be in the head of every team member, if they're a real team player. But the the tips that I can give you is that the best thing for you is to to to, div to divide all work into two types of categories work that is either something that you need others to know about things that in some way might be blocking somebody or it might be something that has critical domain knowledge where the, like, there's a big learning opportunity or something like that going on here and things that you can do in fair isolation. Now usually the, the way to work in any team is to figure out what is fair, like I like to call it leaf uh, leaf tasks like or this sort of this concept where it's something that is fairly isolated it doesn't really matter if everybody knows about it it's good to have a code review you should of course have these sorts of things but you don't really have to consider all that much the like the bigger picture but then you have the bigger picture type of stuff and regardless of which one you you're working on we're going to touch on both i will say that th my first tip is to always start with the ui if there is a ui involved which is usually the case when you're dealing with a web application the reason why i state that is because i always try to think in terms of what is the least valuable thing like the most least usable thing that i can ship that will produce some type of value and if you're working in an SBA type of application you can actually ship a UI experience practically without any server communication you can stub and fake off all the data and if you're using something like say react and redux and so forth you should know that like the entire SBA and it doesn't just apply to react it replies to Vue and angular and the others as well you can just stub and fake off the whole thing and basically create the entire experience for the for the stakeholder now this may not make sense to you because, well, if you don't have the full system, what value does that bring? The value that it brings is that now you can actually show that to your customer, they can play around with it, and they can actually give you feedback before you've built the whole thing. Because odds are that there are miss misses in the specification and new learnings that you will gain from doing that first. Another benefit is that you avoid an issue in front-end world that I see quite often, which is that a lot of software developers will just take the data model that is coming from the server, regardless of what that is, and then let the UI figure out how to extract all the information, which couples the UI layer with the backend layer quite heftily. But if you start with a UI, you actually have to declare your interfaces or like the data shape that you want before you do that. And that is exactly, if you think about it, the thing the server usually does. Because if you want to post data to a server, it's not just going to accept whatever you send. It has a model that it expects you to provide. And if the UI has the same mindset, your code in the UI layer will actually be much cleaner. Because now your components, they actually have an interface. I, I need these pieces of information. And then it is either the server's responsibility or some mapping layer that you might put on the network call or the Ajax call that is responsible for for converting things into the shape you want and that actually keeps your entire business like the UI log logic a lot cleaner than if you didn't do this sort of thing right so 
by doing the UI first or making that happen first, you're actually doing something that is very, very useful. You're getting a you're putting yourself in a position where you can get early feedback from your stakeholders. What I do is that I ship that thing first so that my non-technical usually stakeholders, they can test, they can play around, they can play with the UI and they can see if there are any obvious issues with the specification or something like that. And while they're doing that, I can now work on the backend. Now in the backend I usually try to declare the interfaces that I'm going to trade over the network such as say DTOs or so forth like what the, what am I expecting people to send me what am I going to return after a network call and so forth and start by declaring the models first. Now this ties into the group mindset. So the reason why uh, I argue that you should always categorize things in, in things that are fairly low risk and it doesn't really matter that if everybody knows about it and things that do matter is because if you're working in a group you ideally want to make sure that if you're working on what I like to call backbone features things that are very important for other people because my, it might be the case that you have a really big epic that you're dealing with and maybe you are actually more than one person you're going to be several developers on this thing. Well, now it's really important for you guys to kind of synchronize and have the same sort of picture of what the system is going to look like. That should happen before you start working and it should also be a continuous process where you clue each other in. Because if I'm doing something over here and my coworker is doing something over there and these things in some way are colliding and we don't talk about it, we're actually going to create a worse system and we might actually have to we do we might do double work and things like that so it's really important for us to have a conversation going and in many cases you will find that there are stories that are as I like to call them bottleneck stories what is a bottleneck story well a bottleneck story is a story where you have to do this before it makes any sense for anybody else to join in on the on the work an example would be such as with the UI. If you're going to create a web application type of thing, well, the first thing you really need for any of your like the managers or your designers or anybody who isn't like a hard like a die-hard developer to have any ability to help you, well, the UI needs to be there practically well it would be the minimum thing that you can deliver first so what you're actually doing by doing that first is that you are unblocking other parts of the development chain you're unblocking other people from uh, from helping which is a perfect thing and that is exactly what you want to do on the server as well and that is why i usually say that you should start with declaring your models your data models once you have the ui uh, ui done because usually if you and maybe th two other developers are going to join in on a set of features the first thing that you will all have in common is the data what will be stored in the system, what data model, like what domain entity are we going to deal with. So if you synchronize all the, all, all the people on that story and you say, all right, we'll design the data model together and just write out, okay, this is roughly how it's going to work. And then one of you just creates that story because usually creating a data model is a fairly boilerplate task. You s produce it and then it's kind of done. Once that story is done, because it doesn't really make sense for three people to sit and write the code for something like that, but you can design it together to start off with and that shouldn't take all that long. Once you have done that, well then all of a sudden it might be the case that now you can actually work two or three people on this because one of you are going to do one a few features that are fairly isolated over there and you're going to do a few features over there which is fairly isolated as well. Uh, you can now paralyze the work that you're doing uh, because and you don't really ri because this work basically doesn't risk getting collisions or anything of that nature. Uh, when you're doing it. And that is something that a lot of stakeholders underestimate. There is a sweet spot of how many developers that can work on any one task, just as I like to say that, sure, you can hire 300 people to milk a single cow, but that's not going to be effective. Because just because you add more people to a problem, that doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to go faster. So what I want you to take away from this is that if you are working as part of a software team, Ideally, you should start thinking in terms of, okay, what is work that I can do by myself and maybe clue people in on that I'm doing this thing and you don't really have to think super much about everything else. And what are things that we really need to synchronize on? What is What, what are sto stories and tasks that I'm going to have on my myself where I might block other people? Because if you have such a story, if you know that the work that you have is a dependency for somebody else, try to really think about, okay, which part of this thing can I start working on in order to unblock people as quickly as possible? Because if you are building the whole, if you're doing a full stack thing, if you're building 
50% of the UI and 50% of the back end, you're trying to get everything just so, it's actually going to take you longer to unblock any one party. So it's usually better for you to say create the UI first, which leads to a lot of insights and it unblocks your non-technical stakeholders, they can play around with the UI, they can use it while you're doing the backend work and while they're doing that you start working on the backend work and maybe it might be the case that you have multiple backend developers together with you and you're all trying to paralyze work on this thing and you'll figure out that oh okay uh, we actually need a data model and somebody needs to do that before we can actually run uh, we, we can actually add more people to this problem because having three like unless you're gonna do a mob coding thing or something like that uh, but you can't like effectively work on different branches because the code is just so tightly coupled. So by figuring out if there are any shared dependency work that you can get done fairly quickly and fairly early on, try to prioritize that work so that more people are unblocked from helping you get the get the delivery out the door. If you think in those terms, you will and uh, always communicate of course, you will see that a lot of the work flows much smoother and you will be able to deliver to, deli to deliver much faster. Have a great day.